car. This is my wife, Mary. Um, she had to learn to hand prop when she started to take flight lessons. So if you're going to fly the champ, you got to learn how to start. So we're going to share tips and tricks that I've shamelessly stolen from other people. Most of them, I said that's good. You know? And when you're going, you know, you're watching somebody else hand prop, maybe one of these other experts out here. <laughs> Watch people, see what they do. Always be thinking about what ifs, what could happen. Okay, maybe I'm not in a situation where I can do all my stuff, but what parts can I do of my routine? What can I do to make this particular situation as safe as possible? Okay? Um, I had a friend who was hand propping his buddy's son down there, his battery was dead. A, it's tricycle gear, I don't recommend it. I don't like the geometry. Yes, I've done it. Um, but it's not comfortable because you're bending down and to maintain force in the blade, you've got to lean in. When you lean in, where's your center of gravity? It's ahead of your feet. What happens when you slip? You fall into the prop. Well, he approached the prop and the first command he said was switch off. And the guy turned to switch off. And then he's repositioning the prop to where he wants it. The impulse clicked and it started. The guy in the airplane turned the master switch off. So be sure that you and the person in the airplane are clear and your communication is right. You know what I mean? Make sure they understand what you're saying and you understand what they're saying. Because you don't want to be that guy. Now, nothing happened to that guy because he was treating the prop as it was hot. So he was okay. But it started on it. So, we like to say mag switch off. Make sure we got the right switch on. The person in the cockpit will confirm that. We'll get there a little bit. Um, a little bit about tie downs before we get into that. How many of you use the doggy steak here? <laughs> Nobody? Cool. They may not be able to hear you. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Well, these dog steaks have been welded up. I had one just like this. I twisted it off, putting it in the ground. She has a pad, just a piece, a 50 pound chow mix. Chow broke one of them. What do you think it's going to do with your airplane? In Middletown, Ohio, I don't know, six, eight, seven years ago, uh, a friend of mine, we've both flown in. I had my champ, he had his chief, and a gentleman from Boston had his champ here. The gentleman from Boston was using these, but it was that kind. It had the little stamp put in it. And it pulled one of them right out of the ground. We saw the, we saw the storm cut front coming in. We were getting ready to go to the hotel. We were the only three people there. We saw the wings wiggling and wiggling more, wiggling more, and we drove right out to it. And just as it pulled it out of the ground, we grabbed onto the strut. Now, it was raining so hard, it was like I jumped in the swimming pool. It was that wet. But it pulled the one out of the ground and broke the one off the tail. And that airplane was going to go like this, right over on top of Brian's airplane. But Brian, flown into the fly-in and forgot his tie-downs. Well, I have this set with me, and this one with me, which is pretty stout. And I had the claw. I think I had too many sets. <laughs> He put this one in. It's nothing more than homemade steaks. I'm going to pick it up so I don't trip over it. Five chain links sticking out with a quick link in the middle. It holds really well. It held his airplane all through that storm. Didn't wiggle a bit. Can I, just, anybody here for the Luscom Forum? Thank you. Welcome. Well, we put this kind of tie down on that airplane that was pulling up the wing pull loose from Boston and we put it in an angle so we're pulling it at an angle to it and that works pretty good if we were pulling straight out we loosened all that ground pulling in I could just see it pulling straight out so but that's not a bad how many of you are familiar with a claw the manufacturer says pull straight up a couple of years ago down here at the repair barn they had a Cherokee 6 
pretty heavy engine, long thing. They needed the nose gear off the ground. They put one of these behind the tail and sits it and pulled it down and they held the nose wheel off the ground with that. The manufacturer says pull straight up, but if you have to pull at an angle, pull out over one of the legs. Not between the legs, but over one of the legs. That's the way you're getting the best strength. So how many of you use ratchet straps? I thought it was the greatest thing sliced bread, and I still use it when I go on a cross country to an FBO, but I won't use it in a fly in anymore. Two reasons. I was at a fly in. So when squall line was coming in, I was headed back to my airplane, I was using these, and I had a good Samaritan help me out, tightening it up for me. Well, that was nice of him. I went back. I, I checked it after he got he got away before I got there, and then I just double checked it. And it looks good and snug, so I headed out. Three or four hours later, we had another squall line coming through. I go back, headed back to her. There's somebody else tightening my straps. Now my champ has a dihedral kind of like this, and I'm beginning to picture it looking like this. So where there's a lot of people around, I don't like to use them. I like to use the ropes. Now, this kind of looks like what you buy at Walmart or Farm and Fleet or Fleet and Farm, someplace like that. But it's not. This is from the sailboat community. They're rated a lot heavier. Um, they actually tell me that quarter inch would be big enough, heavy enough for my champ. I just couldn't quite stomach that, so I bought the 516s. Between, this one's 3 eighths. They said 516s would be heavy enough for a stencil. These are pretty decent. I got, I think, 60 bucks tied up in the two coils here. There's enough to do two, two airplanes. Another thing about ratchet straps. This was the first time I used it. Not on my airplane. It was a haul my 300-pound scooter. It broke in the first 50 miles. So be sure what you get strong enough for what you do. <sighs> Just getting stuff out of my way so I don't trip over. How many of you have impulse mags in your airplane? Recognize the sound, right? Like a Imran, what's that? What's that sound mean? Impulse. It's an impulse coupling. If you watch right here, as I slowly turn this, that pin's not moving. That's the shaft on the main needle, and we're winding it up. And when it gets to the release point, it spins real fast. That's to help give you a hot spark for starting. That is retarding the spark. Too top dead center, basically. So if you've got two mags, one with an impulse and one without, start on the impulse mag only because the other one's starting before top dead center. And you're only pulling it through slowly. When it fires, if there's a good fuel air charge in there, it might go backwards. And if you have your fingers curled over the prop, which you shouldn't, it's going to pull you in just momentarily before you get released, and it's going to come around and hit you in the hip or the knee. I've got dual impulses on mine. I start on both. Some airplanes don't have impulses at all. That's how I learned from. And I started on one mag or the other because that, that engine on that particular airplane, the timing was offset by two different timings. So I asked the mechanic which one was the best one. He told me, and that's the one I used. Will a mag fire turn in it backwards? What do you think? I see a couple yeses, you're right. But we commonly do turn them backwards. Because with the impulse, if it's not broken, nothing's happening, is it? But what if the mechanic, say you got a slick mag, what if the mechanic put that one, that left-hand rotation together inside as a right-hand rotation? I've seen it happen. I had to fix one that was done that way. I saw another mag, I don't know why it ran backwards. Because it didn't work on the airplane at all. I put it in just for chicks and grins. I ran the, on the test bench before I took it apart, and it fired backwards. That mag was so screwed up inside, I don't even know how, how it ran. But it ran backwards. Not well, 
but it only got a spark once to cause you problems, right? Okay, now this airplane, I didn't get it done yet today. disconnected the spark plug leads. So you can come up here when we start offering it to let, to let you guys do it individually. You can come up here and do it safe. Top to bottom is done on this side. They didn't even connect them up from last year, so I'm pretty sure they're safe, but I want to be sure. I mean, I don't want anybody at risk. Also, the fuel is took off. I don't even know if there's fuel in the tank, but I've drained the gas blader. There's nothing in the gas blader, nothing coming out, so I'm pretty sure the tank's empty. Is there any regulation on hand propping? Anybody else? None that I know of either. But the FAA does publish this flying handbook where they talk about it. And it's rather lengthy. I'm not going to bore you with the details. But they do talk about hand propping and tie down. Basically, they're promoting the two person hand propping. One person in the cockpit. Does it have to be a pilot? You are correct. It does not have to be a pilot, but it has to be a qualified person. So, this gentleman. He's new to aviation. You're an old timer. You demonstrate to him everything you want. You talk him through it. You work through it. You got to be good at it. He now becomes a qualified person. Just because a qualified person, I know of an instance where the I, I'm going to say young lady, only because she's a little bit younger than me, and her husband were in the airplane. It was a chief, pre-war chief, and. He went to prop the airplane and he said, crack the hot throttle, honey. And she's in the right seat, the brakes are over here on the left seat, so she's pushing them with both hands. The mag switch is put over here on the left. He doesn't know if he, she bumped the throttle or if she cracked it too far. But it started too fast and the airplane started rolling. Threw her back in the seat, now she can't reach anything. She doesn't, she's been doing this for 30 years, but she doesn't think to pull the throttle back. She can't reach the mag switch. He's pushing on the airplane tail to keep it turning around because it was headed towards the fence. She finally got the next switch turned off. She's yelling at him, he's yelling at her. They're both adrenaline's flying and spiking. Nothing happened. And it's, they're all cool now. Yes, they're mine, you know them. Uh, so he he come in the next morning, you see. Tell me about these throttle stops. Okay, the chief's got a center mount of throttle, right? You want to be sure it's all the way out? A piece of plastic, a slot cut it. You can't do it. Say you have a, your airplane that doesn't start good unless you crack it, but you know exactly how much you crack it. Make one a little bit shorter. And you got your crack throttle. It can't go full throttle on you, right? I have a friend in Australia. He wishes he was here this year. He said, Tiana, I, I made mine out of a piece of aluminum. I made a little U-shaped piece of aluminum. And I put a hole in it. I not only have a throttle stop, I have a throttle lock. I put a padlock right in it. I said, Ian, that's pretty cool. Mind if I modify it a bit? He said, go ahead. So I made it into an S. The other side of the S is a little bit shorter. There's my crack drop. What do you think? Gonna hurt your gross weight? <laughs> this one's gonna hurt your gross weight? Nice. Well,
I fly a champ. I use a bungee. Hook it over there to pull it back. As long as nobody's in the cockpit, I know it's not going to get pushed forward. Say I need a crack, I made a little wedge. Put it in there. Pretty simple. Again, I toss it to you. It's really light, but it might probably might not even get there. We're going to demonstrate the two person and then we'll talk about solo hand propping a little bit. And then we'll demonstrate why. Okay, Mary's my hand propper. I'm inside the cockpit. you got to use your imagination. Can you guys hear me now? I'll try and keep speaking up. They weren't supposed to start. No, <laughs> She's going to walk up to the prop and do it. But she's going to clear the area first, make sure it's safe. She's going to get rid of anything that might be distracting. And the reason I talked about that, yes, sir. Oh, I just said this too. Right? That would be a good idea, also. Yes. She doesn't wear one, she plays softball. You can turn it off with the ball goes. Sorry, it's music. She's distracting me. Good thing I'm not cropping. Okay. She's going to clear her area, going to approach the prop. Mag's off. And she tells the guy in the cockpit, I'm in there. Can you imagine that? Okay. She tells me in there, Mag's off. I double check. Mag's off. No. I can do that first with the mag drop. Brake set. Brake set. I, but I set the brakes. She goes, she doesn't trust me. Look at that. So she double checks the brakes. A little push, a little pull. Maybe the guy's got the brakes on, but they're not working. You know? Fuel on. Help me turn the fuel on. I turn the fuel on. Fuel's on. Throttle cracked. Uh, throttle closed. Sorry. Throttle's closed. I closed the throttle. She's already got it primed, okay? Putting her fingers on the prop, the meat here could go over the edge, but not the knuckle, okay? This prop's not slippery, so you can just do it with your hands flat on the face. But if it's slippery, you might want to put just a little bit of meat on it. Contact! Contact. She keeps her form erect. She goes down on the knees, but she keeps her head stuff erect so she's not dipping her head into the prop part. She's close to the prop, so she, yeah, if she's standing like that, where's she going to fall? Right into it. Is that a good idea? No. Hi, Bob. Hi, Shelly. And so she's standing there nice and comfortable. She's relaxed. And framed in. Now, she picks her leg up high to, to remember to step back. I bring mine just forward. Some days, when my balance is being bad anymore, I just keep my feet flat on the ground. You'll have people that'll tell you, you're off the wrong foot. You don't need to do that kick. Or, boy, you got to do the kick, or whatever. It's more important that you have your balance. Because you don't want to fall into that prop, right? Okay. Contact. Contact. Couple steps away, then go out to one wing kick or the other, depending on which door you're getting in, and come back in around to the door from behind the wing or behind the strike. Now, from behind, she's going to put her fingers there, but she's going to pull them out of there right now. But that door <laughs> likes to bounce shut and pinch fingers. So you can tie the door. But you have your your hand, hand gripped here on the door frame, on the strut, wherever, so that you can't get your head into that prop part. And it's the same way the fingers. She's doing the solo, so she's already set the mags where she's And that's all it takes. If you've got an impulse coming, that's all it takes. That easy. Well, what are some other things you could do for a solo hand propping? What could you think of? What other precautions could we take? What's that? We could tie the tail down. Okay. Strap the stick back. What's that? Strap the uh, stick back so the tail will come down. Yeah, you can do that. Not bad. Trots. Some of those is double pitch. 
chocks is the chocks. And if we tied our tail down, who said tie the tail down? Good choice. If we tied our tail down, chocks in front and back. Because if that plane rolls back and creates slack in the row, I mean, it doesn't have to be super tight, but we don't want slack in it. And an airplane jerks forward on you suddenly because something else was wrong. Maybe the throttle was broken and it's all the way forward. It could jump forward and it could snap the rope. Because we're not going to be using super heavy rope, just heavy enough to do what we want to do. And we don't want it to break the rope. As a glider pilot, I create rope slack and then I take it out abruptly to break the rope if I can't get it to release. So we want to make sure we don't have that issue. And I know two people here that one year told me that they've had that happen. They witnessed it happen. It didn't happen to them. One of the guys they took him to the morgue, and the other guy got out of the way, but he chased his airplane around until it ran into his barn. What a, one more thing we possibly could do. We can start with a fuel lock. I don't know about how yours are set up, but mine are run for three and a half minutes at idle. Well, that's three and a half minutes of terror, but it's going to come to an end, right? You primed it with a fuel on, you got it all set to go. Then you turn the fuel off. That's enough time for me, and this has happened too many times for me, to care to admit. Tie the, untie the tail, pull the chocks in, get in, set the altimeter, put my five car harness on, and start to advance the throttle when the damn engine quits because I didn't turn the fuel back on. And it always happens in front of people. <laughs> it never fails. Okay, well, we could tie the tail down. There's a... I want you to grab right there and just pull back on that one, I tell you. This is a livestock snap. It releases very easily, and it's designed, say you got a big horse or a big cow or a bull or something, and the thing rears up on you, it's going to pick you right off the ground. You don't know where you're going to go. And you're holding right there, and you're releasing your low. Let go. Pretty easy. We'll pass that around. <coughs> I got a few more, so we can play with them. Right. Don't throw this <laughs> You back there, ready? Anybody else? Okay. I've got here four examples of cheap, inexpensive ways you could do tie the tail down and release it from the seat. So you've pulled your chalks up, you put them in the plane, and now you're going to undo the tail. This is just that cattle snap. This is around the tie down point. This is one thing through your handle on the back of your airplane. And then this is around the front seat frame or the rear seat frame, whatever. You just pull it and it releases and away you go.